Hello, I'm Kippy from KippyAtHome.com. Welcome to my channel. Tonight we're going to be making these cute little scrap wood projects. They are display risers. They make everything look prettier. So I used another little bit of my scrap wood and made these cute little houses and I will put the link to that post below that video and the post where I wrote more instructions and photos, step-by-step -step photos on how to make these little risers. I'll put that below as well and all of the tools that we used. All right, let's get started. The first thing I'm doing to start making my riser is to gather up my tools. So I'll put a list for these tools below in the description so to make it easy for you to find everything. I decided to use some scrap wood to make these little risers and then I used this chalk paint and I have it in um, a lot of colors and it took me just a few minutes to to make so I thought I would share with you how I did it. So you're going to take the measurements of your riser or try to figure out what size you want it to be and I'll put the sizes to the ones that I made below and you will know exactly what I did and I also wrote a post about it and have more information there so you can go to kippyathome.com and look up more information about how to do it with a step-by-step -step with all kinds of photos so I'm using my circular saw and I am cutting my 2 by 12 it's left here from another project one inch longer than my finished size and all I'm doing is trying to manage this big piece piece of wood. And next, after I do that, I can take it to my table saw. Now I'm gonna take my board and I'm gonna cut an edge off of it using my miter fence just to get, get my board nice and straight. Then I'm gonna run it through and I've used the fence on the other side of the blade to hold it to get six an in, six inch cut. And the piece to the left that I'm cutting off, I'm going to make a push stick. So I'm not really getting rid of it. I'm definitely going to be using it. So I'm going to be careful around that blade. And I'm going to cut now my other six inch cut. So now I, on the right, my that is my rise, riser top. So it's a six by six. And I thought I would just go with that same look where it's kind of six by six, kind of a square. And then I would make my legs into cubes. So now I'm going to cut my legs and they can be any height you want them to be but I just made them into these little squares. So the thickness of the wood is how far away now I've moved the fence. So then I get the thickness, the height, the width, everything is the same. So now I'm going to use that piece that I cut off and it's going to be my push stick. So it's going to be too close to the blade. I'm not going to be able to do that without some little bit of help for my push stick. I also want to mention that the blue tape that I have I put on the deck of the saw is in alignment. The right edge of it isn't aligned to where the blade is. So it's a reference point for me. And in my sewing, I'd call that, you know, the like part of my seam allowance or whatever but it's actually just to mark the blade so then I have that reference point. I've removed the fence to the right of the blade and now I'm going to use a mark that I actually used a pencil mark that I actually put on the top of the saw deck as my mark that I'm using to cut my wood to. And you can see it there to the right of the blade. I'm actually putting my blade down into the saw just to make it a little safer and I'm using the top of my um, saw so I can sand with my belt sander all sides of my little legs. So I want everything to be smooth. It makes a really nice project to have everything sanded smooth. Okay, now I've got all of my legs sanded I'm going to use a piece of lumber that's left over but what you need is a straight edge and you're making going angle to angle and just making a X in the middle and X definitely marks the spot for what we're getting ready to do and that's to mark where you put your drill and you're going to drill just a wee bit in there and then you're going to countersink it with a countersink so the top of your screw head is recessed it makes a really clean finished look and you don't want that metal to 
do actually can um, scratch furniture or even the other um, I actually st made a bigger riser and I stacked them makes it really cute for display makes things look a lot nicer so there's your can counter sink now on this lineup I've actually made these where I've I've glued just glued the little legs on and I didn't screw them in but this turns out a lot nicer and it really holds in good so now I'm going to use that original hole that we made with the with, you know in the middle of the cross I'm going to hold it to the corner and I'm going to go through the entire block leg and I'm going to drill about an eighth of an inch in to the riser bottom then I'm going to line it back up and use a drywall screw that's about two and a half inches and I'm going to drill it all the way through until the head of that screw is recessed into the leg and then move on to the next part. Now I'm going to use my belt sander off the edge of my work surface and I'm going to try to even out everything. So where those legs are, sometimes it's not an exact science and you just even them out with your belt sander and you can sand all edges as well. You can sand your tops and your sides and just make it really nice project. Getting ready to do my spray paint. Do two coats of chalk spray paint. I'm Kippy from kippyathome.com. Make sure you subscribe, ring the bell, and we will see you soon. Plenty of projects coming up. Happy New Year.